Hey guys, it's JH. Welcome to. Uh, oh, this is great. I've got a hundred, like a fifty k wind into it. So they've just turned the the sprinklers on on the green there, and this is blowing all the water over here. <laughs> I can't take a trick. Okay, today just a little bit more on on the final protocol. Oh, they turned them off. They must have heard me. Thank you, Mr. Range owner. He's probably seen me up here. Okay, guys. Uh, I really got to get that club feeling like that. Like we're going to take our ankle off on the downswing. And we want to get in here and we want to stay in here. That's the feeling we want. It's got to be a real pinning back of that trail shoulder. And I'm just going to be talking about this for a while. Haven't hit any shots today. That's the good thing about it. You come here on a blustery day, just get here, and you can just hammer it. Now, guys, first shot of the day. Look at this. See how the hands are here? First shot of the day. And that's great if you go and play golf, because you get on the first tee and you know, you'll, you'll, you'll know that the ball can't go left. I mean, that was just dead straight. It couldn't go left, ever. Try and get square on, James. Now, the swing is, is short and abbreviated of late because of the wind. But I'm getting a lot of acceleration at the ball. So I don't need a long swing to generate the speed. I'm still getting you know, normal plus distance out of that short swing. So here, feels like this. Feels like going to plane it back here. Great feeling, guys. I love it. I won't know myself when the wind stops. It's not as bad today as it has been. Okay, now really back plane it, James. Really drop. Now I'm really shoulder blocking it guys because you can see the finish here and you've got to get that feeling when you get that feeling and that look you know you've got your shoulders closed that impact if you get a low lead shoulder you'll invariably get a roll for a right hand you'll get a roll to the left if you've got a low lead shoulder through impact trying to get square on come on so straight guys and the good thing about you know, I'm not saying that anybody's got a long swing to shorten it to a short swing but the good thing about an abbreviated golf swing is that there's not a lot of time and distance for the club head to get into trouble on the downswing well, I've warmed up after three shots Okay, now really down, keep, stay back, James. Now a couple of sessions of doing that, and feeling that hands in front of the body here, look, and then you can just graduate to a full staying back, but a full a full release of the golf club.
like that. See, that's really back here and just slinging it. Now that's a hard power drill. Really hard power drill. A great shot into the wind, though. I don't like to move the ball that much. I mean, that's moved about five yards. I don't like to move it that much, but that's a really hard release. And see how close my arms are here, guys. That's as good a shot as I've hit since I've been on Channel Lock. That's a beautiful shot there. See, they're all dead center. And what am I feeling? I'm feeling this. I'm feeling like... That's what I feel like on the downswing. I'm so far back here. It feels like this. I'm not out there, I'm here. Remember the Da Vinci Code, the gunslinger. That's what I feel like. So I'll try and lengthen the swing up a little bit. Oh, I love that shot. Oh, that is hammer time. Hammer time. And that's directly into the wind. Oh. But that's just beautiful contact. I noticed on the video, on the because I've got the, what they call the wind cut uh, settings really down, so it just takes any of, tends to mute the, uh, the contact sound. But that contact was perfect. Oh, just perfect. And that's what we say over here, that's more perfecter. That's more perfecter. Australian. Speak. More perfect to shot. Hit a couple of drivers now that I'm warmed up after three shot. Now guys, with the longer club, what I wanted to, to emphasize today with the longer club well just for me I'm still here I'm in the gunslinger pose all the time no matter whether it's a driver or a wedge and the good thing for me is that makes it very very consistent for me so I really like that I don't have to worry about you know distance from the ball I can't further away because the drive is longer but I don't feel further away I don't feel like my balance is compromised because when you have your arms going out away from your body your balance will be compromised. No question about that. But when I keep them in close to my body, it just uh, it just really does stabilise and solidify the the stance. See, I'm staying back and firing the arms away from myself. I'll lengthen the swing a bit. It's interesting. I mean, this driver is an ex-tour issue aero burner. And really high spin golf club, very stiff, sharp, but high spin golf club. The end of the wind, it just I mean, 
mean, when you've got a lot of a high spin on a club and a very, very stiff shaft, I mean, you're going to hit it straight. This driver in play would cost me 20 yards off the tee because there's too much spin for me and I can't bend the shaft enough. It's probably about a 280 uh, CPM, really stiff. Amazing with the high spin, just to digress, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, it's 9 degrees, but with that spin on it, wow, it just launches like a 12 degree. And of course those guys, you know, shut down their releases, I don't do that, I'm very square with my release, I'm using all the spin and all the loft, and it's just stunningly straight. So I'm hitting away from myself, guys. Just hit some short irons, get a couple of nine irons as we did yesterday. Just hit the same things, try and stay back. Try and feel like the club is back here. Little pitch, or a little three quarter nine iron. See, that's a little clamper into the wind. That's a really nice sh shot to hit into the wind. See, into the wind, that 9 iron's only going about 100. but just perfect golf shot. And, and because I'm not trying to hit it any distance and I'm not trying to make a big swing, I can really work on keeping that trail shoulder back. And getting the club in here, almost like I'm gonna take my, uh, my heel off. They are string line, well, you know, any time you're hitting anything from a 7 iron down, you should always hit it straight. I mean, they're just, they're just, you can't hit it straight in that. So guys, the message today is that on the on the downswing, we want to actually, when we're here, we want to feel like it drops there. Like the hands go from here to there. And then, and then this never moves forward, it stays there. Just hit a couple of, um, really uh, full five irons and a couple this way They're just little three quarter five irons to just give me the feeling that I want. Couple this way.
So really going to accentuate staying back on this one. Going to do some secondary bend, some secondary tilt. There it is in. Yeah, I'm heading away from myself. And do I look like I'm hanging back on the trail side? Yeah, you bet. Because that's what I want to do. It's exactly what I want to do. Another one after that. Ooh. Ooh, that was hit. That was hit. Oh, can't stop on that, Jay. They're too good. Whew. Yeah, guys, just here. Here. My whole emphasis is there. Stay really back. Oh, 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 I love that. Hey, it's not easy to do, guys. It's not easy. It's, it's, it's totally against everything we've ever done because there's always this, this overwhelming urge to want to rotate the body. We don't want to rotate the body at all. See guys, we just don't get any, we don't get any gouges or flubs or anything like that. You might get a little, what I call a skinny mini, fourth groover or something, but that's all. Still go dead straight. Guys, you can, you can stay here all afternoon and do this. The ball will never go over here. It has never gone over here from the first day I started this. From the first shot, it's never gone over here. You know why? Because you can't override the geometry of a back ball position and close shoulders. If you keep that, those two components in place, the ball can't go over here. It's not possible. You can't override that geometry. That's the reality. All right? Hammer time. Now that may not look any different in the golf swing, but that feels like 20% more effort. And, and how do I get 20% more effort and, and corresponding extra power? I just stay back more on that trail side. That's all I'm doing. That's the cherry on the on the final protocol. What I've done in the evolution of my channel lock protocol guys is that I've just developed or eradicated any movement on the ball. I basically don't have any. There's no movement on the golf ball. It's just a dead straight shot. Now when you're hitting into the wind, that's a perfect golf shot. Because it has the right amount of backspin to keep it dead straight. You don't want side spin on it. Because it can get away. But there's no getaway in this shot. I guess that's probably the the real terminology for the ball flight. There's no getaway in channel lock my channel lock at the moment. I think I probably unconsciously just balanced up my angle, my into out angle attack and my club face angle and they balanced out uh, to the extent now that I'm dead square when, when, when I hit the ball. Guys, it feels like that this is pinned to something over there. That's the feeling. And I get this feeling. 
Everything's moving away from this pin trail shoulder. It's, everything's moving there. Now it's hard to get. And it took me, you know, about an hour to get it. But when I got it, I had the feeling, and it just feels like it's pinned, like someone's just pinned it back there. And everything goes away from it. It's a great feeling. Okay, when I'm really back there, and I exaggerate it, I get that little, you know, three to four yard draw. Because I'm getting back in, I'm getting a lot of, a lot of extension and a lot of turnover. But that's the worst I'll get. It's always gonna start right and then draw back. Last shot, let's just hammer one, JH. See if, see what the breakdown point is. There's no need to hammer a five iron, you go to a four iron, but into the wind here, if you had to hit a sort of a torpedo, where you really had to bore it in, you needed a really, well, see, I, I defeat my doctrine there. I would never hit this shot into a wind. If I wanted to hit a, you know, boring shot into the wind, I'd take a four iron and just sweep it and take all the spin off. But I'm just gonna hit a, like like a torpedo here with a five on. What am I going to do? I'm going to pin that shoulder back even more. Like that. Oh, guys, that's just fantastic. Okay, about three yard draw. But that is just sensational. So, guys, it's such an important part. And we talked, one of the guys said... Um, uh, that I hadn't mentioned five o'clock nose. Well guys I tell you the five o'clock nose actually is the is the abutment for that trail shoulder to pin it back there. That five o'clock nose stops that trail shoulder coming further forward. But I tell you someone I know has got a parrot and he's and he's trained it to say and he calls the JH, and you walk in and it says, well, he tells me, I haven't seen it yet, but he said, <laughs> you walk in and it says, hi guys, welcome to the practice team. It's a parrot, Australian parrot. I don't know if he's kidding me or not. He calls the JH, and you walk in and it says, hi guys, welcome to the practice team. It's JH, welcome to the practice team. If I get a video of it, I'll show you. I think it might be Josh. In Those Australian parrots, I can say anything. Okay, come on, pin it back. Now I just let that come forward a little bit and you could see that because this lead shoulder was over there a little bit. What was the result of that? Just a little push, a little push away. Because I just didn't, I, weren't, I wasn't closed enough and I didn't shut the, I didn't shut the, um, face down enough on the release because this was just a little not closed enough so that gives me that little push shot but eminently playable pushed about five six yards oh oh I love it you know what I feel guys I feel this I feel like a whoosh. I do feel this I go here and I feel whoosh. Like a whoosh. it's like a throw down there. The good one is a throw down there. So that's what you want to cultivate the feeling of. Get it here and it, it's a throw down here. That just felt unbelievable. We're trying out a new brand of range ball here. And it's um it's actually a bit higher spin than the ones we normally have. Throw it down. Yeah, that's good there guys. Okay guys, just all we'll be doing now with the protocol is just reinforcing, reinforcing. But we want to get this little bit here. And for the and for my uh, my buddy Bill Phillips from MMI who's having the uh, the channel like gathering at Pickwick this weekend, this will be something that he can uh, he can give to the guys there. Come on, James, one more. One more.
don't know if you can hear that contact, but it's just great. And I'm not losing any distance with a little swing. Okay guys, as I say, these are just reinforcing tapes. We've got the final protocol now. I'll be putting it together formally in a video in the coming week, which will be a complete revision of, of the evolution of the of channel lock, how it came about, what the base tenets of the protocol are, and, and what we've got to do going forward to reinforce it. So I'll put that together formally. I mean, the last couple of days have just been bits and I've said, yeah, this is the final protocol, but I'll have to put it together you know, in a fashion where we go from number one in the sequence to whatever I've got in mind, which is probably five, five points of the protocol. And guys, that's why I can't, I can come here any day, absolutely any day, I can come here and, and I can just hit the first shot and I'll always hit it okay. I don't have to look for the golf swing because you know why? Because I know the golf swing is encapsulated in the protocol, the numbers of the protocol. And if I apply the numbers of the protocol in their correct sequence from one and I just count them down, then I have to get the same result. I can't do anything else. The only reason I won't hit the ball as I want to with the correct ball flight is if I leave something out of the protocol. Now this is a protocol. Now conventional golf swings, there's so many variables in them. And even people who think that they're playing the ball off their, their left heel, you know, a la Jack Nicklaus, they'll be playing it off their toe or outside their toe. Or well, the person thinks he's playing it there and he's playing it back in the centre. So there's this huge disparity that you can have because the alignment aids are not good enough in a conventional golf swing. But in channel lock, we've got this trail foot and we've got a variance of the width of the foot. I work with about, you know, my big toe or my... Or my my second toe but you can work right back to the to the um, the piggy toe the little toe you can walk right work and you can work behind that guys just depends on what suits you and how flexible you are to play it behind the trail foot will really help this when you're hitting really help that okay guys let's say it's revision 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 just have a look at that and uh, uh, there was something I was going to oh yeah if we're going to hit a little a little pitch shot to a green it's green out here at about 40 yards do we still have the same emphasis of back here you bet your life you bet your life guys, you don't want to change anything. Every shot has got to have this back here. That's the feeling, even in putting, I feel that I have a predominance where I want to stay here, behind the trail side, as the hand comes to the ball. So with the pitch shot, this little pitch shot, straight into the wind here. You want to stay back here. Go in, go in, go in, go in, go in, go in. That was a real chance to go in, little dead center. But see how this was here, guys? There's no flippiness. That's the great thing about it. No flippiness. You don't get any of that. Because you've got you've got shoulder block. And the single biggest problem with what I call critical accuracy and distance shots like that is that we get a lot of variables in the golf swing. You know, the, 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 the rank and file player, the club player, he'll get here on a shot like this and the club will cock up and he'll try and take it outside and cut across and spin it. The amount of you know, mid to high handicappers used to come for lessons in my facility and I'd say, how would you play this shot? Oh, I'd open up and I'd cut across it and I'd spin it. I'd say, how much would you spin it? Oh, I'll just, no, they hit it and they flub it and say, no, 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 but I, I just need a couple of shots. I say, guys, you don't get a couple of shots on the golf course, and that is such a high-risk shot. There wouldn't be a pro in the world. The tournament this would play that shot. You don't need to do You don't need to be cute. Get rid of the cuteness in these shots. These shots are practical application. Get the ball on the green, first shot, 
and within a proximity that you can down the putt. Don't try and be cute. Don't try and hit a career shot. I mean, I'm very conservative on these shots. 40 yards in here, if I can get it in, you know, you know, 12 foot circle from here, 15 foot circle, I'm happy because I'm a chance to knock that, those putts in. I can usually get it inside that, but I'm happy to get it in there. You know, 15 foot circle, seven foot either side of the flag from here. I should be able to do that easy. I mean, that one almost went in. I mean, it was, ended up that far away. And that's because there's nothing cute in that shot, guys. Look, it's here. Nothing cute. We don't want cuteness in our golf swing. Eliminate the cuteness. Okay guys, that's that's just a couple of points today. But they'll be they'll be reinforcing, reinforcing, reinforcing as we go forward. But I hit it great today. I hit it great yesterday in the wind. Those three irons that I hit yesterday in the wind, they were just bombs. Absolute bombs. The reason I ended that tape with no commentary yesterday guys, there was a uh, there was a guy behind the camera over there that was hitting shots and he turned around and he was actually fooling around he was actually aiming at me so that's why I walked off the way I did but he got the message I mean, some people do some ridiculous things I mean I don't understand it so I was only fooling around I'm trying to do a video and you're aiming a shot at me yeah okay guys um, the world was that famous uh, English comedy some mothers do have them and they do and you find them a driving room. Some of the things we have happen here, you wouldn't believe. But I guess it's the same in every... I mean, I had, you know, I had a super big driving range, practice facility, uh, myself for a long time, and uh, some of the things I saw happen there would defy them. Just defy understanding. Okay, I digress. Okay, guys, that's, uh, that's just today's reinforce, reinforce, reinforce. So I put the whole protocol together in the course of, uh, of the next few days. It'll just be from go to work. Uh, final protocol explained in detail.